Okay, let's look at an example. Um, on this one, we're gonna we're gonna go all the way through from start to finish and do the whole hypothesis test for this one. So let's check it out. So it says a researcher claims that the mean age of women in California at the time of a first marriage is higher than 26.5 years, or in other words, they're older than 26 and a half years old. Surveying a simple random sample of 213 newlywed women in California, the researcher found a mean age of 27 years. Assuming that the population standard deviation is 2.3 years, and using a 95% level of confidence, determine if there is sufficient evidence to support the researcher's claim. Okay, so the very first thing we have to do is we have to come up with our hypotheses. So we have to figure out what claim is being made here, what kind of accusation against the status quo is being made. So if we look, a researcher claims that the mean age of women in California at the time of first marriage is higher than 26.5 years. So it says the mean is higher than 26.5 years old. So our alternative hypothesis, we're dealing with the mean, we're making a claim about that, and we're claiming that the mean is higher than, greater than 26.5. Okay. So now we know that our null hypothesis has to be the opposite of that, and it has to include equality. So the null hypothesis is gonna be that the mean is less than or equal to 26.5 years old. Okay, so we've gotta do that before we can do anything else. And on a lot of the, the Hawks problems, this would be step one, right? It'll start you off with that step, okay? So now, step two, we need to figure out which test statistic we're gonna use, what formula we're gonna use, but we only have one available to us right now, so we don't have to think too hard about that. But one thing that we can see is that we're given the population standard deviation. Okay, so since we've got the population standard deviation given to us, we're gonna use a Z test statistic. And to get our Z, our formula says it's X bar minus mu over sigma divided by the square root of n. So we've got four numbers we've got to pick out here, okay? So the easiest one to pick out first is mu, okay? And remember mu is special. Mu is gonna be the number that we've got in our hypotheses, okay? So this number here, this 26.5, that's gonna be mu, okay? X bar is our sample mean. That's gonna be a mean that comes from some sample data. So it says in the survey, the researcher found a mean age of 27 years, so this 27, that's our sample mean, X bar. Okay. Now if we go to the bottom of the formula, sigma is our population standard deviation, it gives us that 2.3 years. Okay. And then the only one we're missing is lowercase n, and that is our sample size, and the problem says surveying a simple random sample of 213 newlywed women, so that's n. Okay, so now we can we can plug into our formula here. So let's see, we've got 27 minus 26.5. And then on the bottom, we've got 2.3 over the square root of 13. 213, sorry. Okay, so this is gonna give us our Z test statistic. Okay, so bear with me while I punch that in my calculator, minus 26.5, and I'm gonna hit equals divided by, put a parenthesis, 2.3 divided by square root 213, and then close my parentheses. And with these, we're gonna round to two decimal places, so on this one, I should put a squiggly equal sign here because we're rounding, so this will give us 3.17, okay, that is our test statistic, okay? Now, we also need to figure out what our level of significance is gonna be on this one. This one doesn't give us significance directly, but what it does give us is it gives us a 95% level of confidence, okay? So to get our alpha, our significance, we do one minus the confidence, so one minus 0.95, so our alpha here 
is 0 0.05, and it's going to be our significance level. The only thing we're missing is we need to come up with a p-value. Okay, so we're trying to get a p-value here so we can compare that to our alpha. So what type of test is this? Okay, is it left-tailed, right-tailed, or two-tailed? Well, if we look at our alternative hypothesis, we have a greater than symbol. That points to the right, so this is a right-tailed test. So that means to get our p-value, and come up with our p-value, we want the area to the right, of our test statistic, which was 3.17. Okay, so we go to our normal distribution tables for that, and uh, one way we can do that is, since we want the area to the right of 3.17, we can look up negative 3.17, and our p-value here is gonna be 0 0.0008. So very small, okay, very small p-value. So now the only thing we have left to do is we want to compare our p-value to our significance level, alpha, up here. Okay, so here our p-value is 0 0.0008. Our significance level, alpha, was 0 0.05. Okay, so what's our comparison? Our p-value is smaller than our alpha, and so our p-value is less than alpha, a small p-value. Remember, if the p-value is low, what do we do? We reject the null hypothesis. That would be our conclusion. And if we need an interpretation, we're rejecting the null hypothesis, so that means we have strong support in favor of the alternative hypothesis, and the alternative hypothesis here was the researchers claim that the mean age of first marriage is higher than 26.5 years. So we have strong statistical evidence that the average or the mean age of women upon first marriage in California is greater than 26.5 years old.